The war in Ukraine is far away from the Pacific coast of Peru. But soaring prices from disrupted trade are hitting Peruvians close to home. Ricardo runs a medium-sized transport company. He likes to drive and enjoys the solitude behind the wheel. When I was little, I wanted to have my truck, my own truck, because my parents didn't have the means. But I used to say, when I grow up and start working, I will have a truck. And my dream came true, right? His business started with a single second-hand truck. Today, Ricardo's fleet counts 17, but only 10 vehicles have been running since COVID and the economic crisis that followed. Because of the crisis, I don't have clients anymore. I don't have as much freight as I used to. We used to load one or two trucks a day, and now it's just two or three trucks a week. The cost of living crisis has sparked violent protests in the country, intensifying the political turmoil. For entrepreneurs like Ricardo, carrying on is proving difficult. Soaring prices at the petrol station are pushing the cost of his services out of customers' reach. Many have gone bankrupt, and with a third of his activity gone, the 52-year-old has to take difficult decisions. Out of his four branches, he's had to shut down two. 17 people have lost their jobs. What hurt me the most was to let go of the people I had worked with, my staff, those I've been working with, both my drivers and loaders. I had to fire them. It was painful. It saddens me because I worked with them. They were family. Ricardo used to transport mainly hardware and paint to clients in remote areas of the country, such as this cargo being loaded for his most loyal customers in the Peruvian Amazon. The 900 litres of fuel needed to cover the 84-hour drive cost 50% more than before the start of the war in Ukraine. With the slowdown of his activity, his profits have shrunk, as have his plans. I thought about buying buses, but that dream is now gone. There are other dreams too that Ricardo has put on hold. If my level of income had remained the same, my ambition was at least to send my children to study, not here in Peru, but abroad, or send them to a good university. Instead, his eldest son John is now joining the family business. As rising fuel prices make the evening headlines, Ricardo and his family worry about keeping the activity afloat. But he is used to taking adversity in his stride, and he's found new opportunities by turning to the markets, the wholesale food market. Here, the Peruvian Food Bank collects unsold produce, and the World Food Programme hires trucking companies through public tenders to deliver it to the most vulnerable. It's a lifeline for the city's poor, but also for Ricardo's business. I'm surviving, mostly because I always respond to public tenders. There is a little more earnings there. If it wasn't for the tender that I already have with the state, I would have already shut down. Ricardo says the contracts allow him to keep afloat as he can at least pay his staff and overhead expenses while doing some good for people in need. Like in Chorillos, one of the fog-shrouded and dusty townships of Lima. Today, Ricardo brings vegetables. This is a highly anticipated delivery for Jenny, who runs one of Chorillos' soup kitchens and serves about 100 meals a day. Here, as elsewhere, Poor families are struggling to make ends meet, and they have to make hard choices to provide for their children, between education, a home, and proper food. Jenny knows very well what they are going through and what they need to get by. It is a nutritious meal 
we do not just give anything, we give a very good meal to the neighbors. It allows them to help themselves. They must pay for electricity, internet, children at school, bus tickets every day. So this allows them to save a little for other needs. Jenny now provides food for taxi drivers who have lost their income because of the high fuel prices. But the cost of delivering food to her soup kitchen is also on the rise. Before, a three-ton truck would charge me 150 soles. But now they charge me 270. They even ask for 400. I have to haggle over prices, look everywhere for the cheapest. Ricardo and John say little on their way back from the soup kitchen. They both appreciate that they are well off and can still enjoy that most precious of things, hope. We still have hope. My son John also cheers me up a lot as he says, Dad, let's move on. If you can't make the company grow anymore, I'll be the future. A new day begins and soon a new life. Ricardo's fifth child is on the way. Another milestone in his long journey.